This is a UK Maths Challenge Intermediate Challenge and with permission from the UKMT I'm going to go through a question. You might want to pause the video and have a go yourself first or you might just want to watch and see how I do it. Here's the question. If P, Q and P minus Q are all positive integers, which of the following is least? Q squared over P squared, P squared over Q squared, Q over P, the square root of Q over P, or the square root of P over Q. Just quickly, what does integer mean? Integer means a whole number. So 1 or 2 or 10, not 10.5 or 1.1. So integer equals whole number. Let's move that up so you can see it. There we are. Now, I think the best way to go through this example is to think of a couple of numbers for P and Q and then test them out. But we're not just going to do that. We're going to try and discover a general principle about square numbers and root numbers when they apply to fractions. So the numbers I pick are going to be quite deliberate. Pretty much any number I pick would work, but these numbers will hope help demonstrate the principle behind it. So I'm going to pick P as being 4 and you cannot see that so let's change the colour. P as being 4 and Q as being 1. Now we can see that P would have to be bigger than Q. That's the reason why I've chosen a bigger number for P compared to Q. Why is that? If P take away Q is a positive integer, that means P has to be bigger. If Q was bigger, so for example, if Q was 4 and P was 1, then 1 take away 4 would not be a positive integer. So P would have to be bigger in this case. Let's look at a few of these things. First of all, the one in the middle looks nice and uh, straightforward. So we've got here Q over P. And in this case, that would be 1 over 4. Let's look at when we square it though. Many people think, let's choose A first of all because that's the same arrangement as C. Many people think that if you square a fraction it's going to make it bigger. Surely if you square a fraction it makes it bigger. But if you think about it, um, squaring the whole thing is the same thing as squaring the top and squaring the bottom. And a quarter times by a quarter, which is squaring it, because you, you times it by itself, that's going to make it smaller. Because a quarter times a quarter would be 1 over 16. And we can see q squared over p squared, well, 1 squared is simply 1, and 4 squared is 16. So we actually get, if we do q squared over p squared, we get 1 over 16 we get a smaller number. How about p squared over q squared? Well, p squared would be 4 squared, which is 16. So it would be 16 over q squared, which is 1 squared. So that's 1. So far, we've seen q squared over p squared is 1 over 16. p squared over q squared would be 16 over 1. And q over p is 1 over 4. We've discovered a couple of things, I hope. First, that when you square a, a, a proper fraction, as in where the denominator is bigger than the numerator, like a quarter, you actually get a smaller number. So when the fraction is between 0 and 1, basically, and you square it, you actually get a smaller number. 16 over 1 is simply 16, because 16 divided by 1 is just 16. Whenever you see a fraction where the bottom line is 1, it's just the top line, basically. What about the root bit? In the same way as squaring the top and the bottom is the same thing as squaring the whole thing. So for example, for A, what I could have just done is write it like this, Q over P, the whole thing squared. That is just Q squared over P squared. Same thing for root. So root of the whole thing is simply root of Q which in this case is 1, 
and root of 4, which is p. So the root of the whole thing is the root of the top and the root of the bottom. Now, again, many students would think square rooting something, that must make it smaller. But with a proper fraction, again, the rules are reversed. Square rooting something would make the fraction bigger. We can see this because what is the square root of 1? The square root of 1 is just 1. We're proving it. And the square root of 4 is 2. So it's gone from being a quarter, which is just q over p, to being a half. It's got bigger. And the square root of p over q is the same thing as the square root of p, which is 4, over the square root of q, which is 1. And that equals 2 over 1. And we saw from before, 2 over 1 just means 2. So the five expressions we have are q squared over p squared is 1 16th, p squared over q squared is 16, q over p is a quarter, root q over p is a half, and root p over q is 2. So in this case, of 4 and 1, it's a, q squared over p squared, which is the least the thing is, though, whatever you pick for your positive integers, you'll get the same result. And you might want to go ahead and try different numbers. The reason why I chose 4 and 1 is because they're small numbers, easy to use. They're actually both square numbers, so when we square root it, we don't even need a calculator. And they're small enough that when we square it, it was a nice, easy calculation. So I just use those numbers for demonstration. But any numbers any positive integers, you'll get the same effect. That for a proper fraction, when you square it, it actually gets smaller, and when you square root it, it actually gets bigger.